Hello everyone, this is Corinne Lafont, your favorite radio host, your only radio host and favorite girl, of course, broadcasting to you from the lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean on Between the Lines. And today I have with me Tuana Lawler, but you know, before I get started and formally introduce her, yeah, and welcome her to the show, I normally start my show off being grateful, or some people may say thankful. I am so thankful to be alive above ground and to be here once again, another day, another new life, another new blessings, new graces. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here today to impact people's lives, for people's lives to impact me and to learn as many lessons as I can throughout the day. Yeah, to be able to help as many others. It's a circle of love for the Lion King, right? So let me tell you a bit about Tuana Lola. She's a poet, author, and playwright. When her creative juices get to rolling, she's on fire. She has written a couple of plays that went straight to DVD. Who Did I Marry? Starring Terry Vaughn and Tommy Ford. She also wrote God's Precious Jewel, starring Robin Givens. She, she all, she's also the author of a children's book entitled Castle King Gang, a gang of twins come together to stop things such as bullying. She has written a few more things, Liberty of Silence and From Darkness to His Marvelous Light. She now has another book to add to the list, My Life from Tragedy to Destiny. This is one of her best work, as she says, My Life from Tragedy to Destiny, a contemporary literary nonfiction, a story of Tuana Denise Lawler, known to some as Nisi. A proud, intelligent woman whom over the years has added poet, playwright, and author to her bio. She has overcome many obstacles in life, and it is told in this book, My Life. From losing her father to suicide, teenage pregnancy, sexual assault, and much more. And with every punch, she became stronger. It was not so good in the first half, but the latter is great. <laughs> with the recognition of her gift, people wanted her to write for them. She was raising her five grandchildren and living her life. She was not aware of the news to come. Tuana shares her hurts and pain and dealing with a chronic illness in, her life, in my life, her book. And how after being celibate for 10 years, she got some horrible news. Hmm. Tuana remains celibate and it is now 15 years. Awesome, we need to learn about that. Her faith and love for God got her through, as always. She admits that she questioned God. Who doesn't? Why me? And his reply was, why not you? As he normally says. She now knows things happen for a reason. Writing is her love and desire. Her belief is if one person is touched by her words, then she is truly blessed, my belief as well. Tuana wrote a play, it plays third in a gospel play contest, congratulations. She wrote a screenplay, it plays third in LA screenwriting contest, congratulations. Just recently she won a poetry contest, congratulations again. Tuana is now asked to speak at churches and organizations to share her testimony. She spoke at a national women conference and received a standing ovation. And she's saying keep a lookout for her because one of her plays may be coming to your city. You just never know where Twana may see you. Welcome, Twana, to Between the Lines. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And we're talking today about is there a silver lining? Is it a myth? I mean, after all the things that you've gone through, I wouldn't call them tragedies because there are lessons in them. Yes? Yes. 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 People see them as tragedies, as you say in the beginning, when you're going, when you're in it and you feel you're surrounded by darkness, you think, oh my God. This is it. I'm going to die, dig a hole, jump in it, you know, but, but it becomes a lesson and you realize how much stronger you become. And these lessons yes. really were meant for you. So instead of really saying, why me? You're, you know, God is reminding you, why not you? I chose you for this. I'm not choosing you to punish you. You had to go through these lessons because there may be people out there that need to hear your story through your plays, through your you know, your writing through your books. I want you to share with us, you know, as, as, as quickly as you can, but yet, you know, carry across the point of your life story. What are some of the struggles? You talk about teenage pregnancy, is it sexual assault, father committing suicide, and being celibate and, and getting some horrible news. What's going on with that? Uh, yes, that, you know, after all the things I went through prior to that, <laughs> This news was the worst. It was the worst, as I thought in the beginning I did, but now I'm okay with it. But uh, after 10 years of celibacy, I started getting sick. Mm -hmm. And 
I had moved my grandkids and myself and one of my daughters and her daughter to California, from Louisville, Kentucky to California, and, uh, to get away from a lot of problems I was going through here in Louisville. And, um, I started getting sick like a couple of years later while I was in California. Went doctor to doctor. They said it was black uh, disease, all kind of things. But I went to this one particular woman doctor and she said, your symptoms sound like HIV. And I told her, I said, no, I can't have that because I've been celibate for 10 years. And she said, that doesn't matter. She said it could stay in your body for up to 10 years. So I was, I was in shock. I didn't know what to say. So when the test came back, it came back positive. And, uh, wow. I was a little, little, yeah, I was angry. The guy who infected me with HIV was a minister. Wow. And I was with him one time. He was telling, telling me for about a year, he was telling me he loved me, wanted to marry me. And then we got together for the first time. I, it was like nine months. We met first face to face because we met on MySpace. Uh, Facebook wasn't even out. So it's been a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave me one pill to take and in my mind one pill was too many to take and so I stopped taking the pills and uh, I, you know, I was depressed I was severely depressed and I was in denial and I stopped taking the pills and three years later I had a they said a real bad seizure but you know I can't remember and that's when they found out I had AIDS and, wow. uh, yeah and I had two weeks to live <laughs> and th yeah this well, was in 20 that two weeks has lasted a pretty long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. That's I'm not right. going anywhere. Not way soon. Uh, yeah, but uh, now I'm I'm AIDS positive. So because of that, because it turned into AIDS, I thought once my numbers were undetectable, it went back to HIV. They said no. They just told me this recently. They said no. You still. Uh, uh, wow, you know, what a I, news to get, what yeah. a news to get. How did you handle it? I mean, I can't imagine. I, I would be going crazy. I, I could tell you I would be going crazy and to know that you were celibate. And you know, you're talking oh. and, and a lot of people will be listening to this and say, one time, it only takes one time. One time, yes. One time. It, 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 was. Takes, one time. it yeah. only takes one time to be pregnant. Yeah. It only takes one time to Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I'm saying, oh my God, of all the things, you know, and I'm, I would go crazy, Tuana. Tell me, how did you, you were uh, you sitting down? Were you rolling on the ground? What, what, where was your uh, mind? Uh, I was just in shock. I, I wouldn't talk. I had to tell my, I have four daughters. So I had, they, uh, three of them was in California with me, helping, helping me take care of the five children I had custody of. So I had to tell, I told one of my daughters, I went to pick up at work and I drove to a park and I, uh, sit and told her and we both just start hugging each other and crying because we were uneducated about the disease uh -huh. and then I had to go tell the other uh, two daughters that was at home and we all cried and they said they was going to be there for me and they were they uh -huh. were because I couldn't walk I couldn't uh when, when once they diagnosed me with AIDS uh they said that it went straight to my brain. It should have killed me then. When I had that seizure the disease went straight to my brain didn't go anywhere else went straight to my brain it was that was the intention to kill me, but I didn't die. What happened was I ended up having dementia, and mm -hmm. I didn't remember anything. I didn't remember how to write or how to use a computer. I didn't know how to walk. I was in a wheelchair. Wow. Yes, my daughters had to take care of me, and they bathed me, combed my hair, brushed my teeth. I could not do one thing. My I God. Eat. I cook. I would burn the house down if I cook. You know, I, <laughs> I wasn't in my, yeah, and I wasn't in my right mind. And so, uh, you know, thank God I had my daughters. And that's what kept me sane was my daughters. Because uh, even when they told me uh, that my numbers were changing and getting better, I still remained depressed because I got AIDS now. So, yeah, now I'm, yeah I'm severely depressed. And, you know, I, I just wanted to give up. I, just, I wanted to yeah. do what my father did. But you know, my daughters were not going to let me do that. They was not going to allow me. And they would tell me all the time, you're going to live and you're going to write and uh -huh. you're going to do this. And they would yeah. say that. And mm -hmm. I ended up getting better. Yeah, I was even shocked. What happened to the minister that, that gave it to you? Did I, you communicate he, with him? He, how did, he, you, he, how he did you know it was? How did you know it was him? Because I was celibate when I uh I had already been tested. I had a hysterectomy. And okay. uh, that's how I gave my life to God because mm -hmm. I heard God's voice. And mm -hmm. then I, I became born again. I used to drink. 
you know, because of the rapes, I used to drink beer a lot, and smoke cigarettes, and I stopped that instantly. I wasn't weaned off of it or anything because I heard God's voice. And that was before I found out about the disease. So I didn't have the disease then when I, you know, and I was celibate for almost four years when I met the guy. Mm-hmm. And I told him I was keep holding, you know, keeping myself a husband because I was a Christian. You know, I was like, yeah. uh, I'm going to save myself a husband. And that's when he was telling me he loved me and, and uh, he wanted to be with me. So after nine months, I flew to Memphis, Tennessee, and he met me. He lived in uh, South Car- South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, I said, well, if he kept on pressuring me for sex. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, you have to uh, wear protection. You know, because mm-hmm. I, I know I don't have anything. I had already been tested yeah. Yeah. when they did the surgery on me. So uh, he was like, okay. And I thought he, I heard the paper turn. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and I, I mean, I really didn't want to do it for real. So, mm-hmm. but I was just giving in because he was telling me he loved me. And I was just being weak, uh-huh. and really. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, listen, I think, really think that this man loved me. He did not love me. Mm-hmm. After that, after that weekend, I heard nothing from him. He got his number changed. He disappeared. Wow. So yes. he was spreading that. That's a mouth, wow, the devil in the making. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh my God. You said you met him online. So people who are listening to this, you need to pay attention. Yes. You know, but you said he didn't love you. I mean, it comes back. You didn't love yourself either at that time. Right. 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 Because if you, it's not a matter of blaming him. He's doing what he came to do, uh-huh. and he got he got his objective and done. For, yeah. He got, yeah, he got his purpose done. He meant for you to fly over. Imagine that. You fly over to get that thing. You fly over to yeah. get that. Yeah. You mm-hmm. went for that. Can you imagine? We women yeah. are so vulnerable and susceptible. Yes. We need to be stronger in our faith. You give yourself mm-hmm. to Christ. And this is not judging you. This is, this is a lesson yeah, it's true, coming yeah. out of your, of your situation for us to learn. We meet people. We want to be loved. We want to be cared for, adored, and respected and and you know we want companionship we want that you know and we 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 think we see it in other people but oh my god they they have a motive and we have to give these things time yes we have to give these things time Mm -hmm. wow so he disappeared so you have no way of contacting him or no no Uh, he uh like a couple years ago uh uh my birthday uh, you know, people were telling me happy birthday. And he said happy birthday to me. This was like, in, uh, probably like three years ago. And I said to him, you know, I went to the doctor. I tested positive for HIV. And uh, he said, uh, I didn't give you no HIV. He cussed at me. He's supposed to be a minister now. Mm-hmm. He cursed it. Yeah, he cursed at me. He said, I ain't give you no uh, uh, HIV and hung up. But that told me right there he was guilty. Because mm-hmm. he, I didn't say he gave it to me. <laughs> I didn't say he gave it to me. I said I. They said that's what I had. I was diagnosed with it. I didn't say he gave it to me, but he knew he gave it to me. That's why he got mad. He uh-huh. knew he gave it to me. Wow, your daughter's God came true for you. I mean, most times families turn away, you know, from yeah. from situations like this. Mm-hmm. Leave you on your own, abandon you, reject mm-hmm. you. Thank God, yeah. you know, God sent you know, your children to be mm-hmm. there for you, that you are able to be on the show today to, to share your testimony and show yes. people that there is a silver lining. There is a silver lining. It is not a myth. It is possible. It might be a very thin silver lining. Like it says, it's just a lining. You know, you could probably barely see it, but it is possible. And you have been doing fabulous things. I mean... <laughs> I my head is hurting me just thinking about it, Tuana. Just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, you you know some you know some good came from it mm-hmm. because I as as far get getting up and speaking in front of a lot of people, I did not want to do that, mm-hmm. and it just fell in my lap, and I've been doing it ever since since uh, two thousand fourteen. Wow. And the crowd oh, it, you mentioned you mentioned good came out of it. Tell us some lessons. I mean, after being in dementia, wanting to burn the house down. You know, all sorts of things. What What are some lessons that you can share? I mean, people don't really see. In hindsight, they might say yes. But at the time, they don't see when you're going through these dark times. They don't see it. Mm-hmm. Now that you have been through it, you know, um, what, what can you share with the listening audience that they can learn from your life story? Uh, well, the first thing uh, people need to get tested. Uh, 
Yeah, because a lot of people are afraid to get tested and they need to uh, get tested. That's number one. If you can't remain celibate, and then uh, uh, there's protection. You know, there's condoms and different things you can do to keep from getting it because you're going to get it if you're out here and you're messing around with different people. I happen not to be messing around with a lot of people. I wasn't on drugs. I never did drugs a day in my life. It's just that well, one night. Like you said, wow. at one night, and that's what did it. This would be with that guy for one night, and I trusted him. See, we talked for like almost a year, so I thought he was okay. Yeah. I thought he was okay, and he he would call me like I work for the gas and electric company. On my uh, lunch break, he would call me. We would talk on lunch break. Mm -hmm. uh, he would call, send me flowers. He would do all kind of things. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that don't mean he's a good man <laughs> because no. he told me not to be. Yeah, so. Uh, and then plus, like I met him online, and mm -hmm. I, I don't think uh, I, he's gonna meet your husband online, really. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some people may, but I I don't think it's a good idea. And he had to be uh, safe, you know, because you don't really know those people. I didn't know what he was doing when mm -hmm. uh, he was in one state and I was in another. I didn't That's know. Right. Who he was with right. him. Yeah. But it so, also means, like I said, you needed to work on yourself, love yourself yes. enough to yes. appreciate you, love you, love you, and don't be yes. in in you know in such neediness desperation come from a place of lack that that you feel oh you need to be with this person the flesh the flesh is weak to us yes. the flesh is weak yes it is yeah yeah flesh i don't fall for that now <laughs> <laughs> I, learned, I learned my lesson nobody you know mm -hmm. i guys would try to talk to me and i tell them my situation they don't even care they don't mm -hmm. even care but I, I, I that does not mean anything to me right now mm -hmm. because i you know i'm not ready for all that i'm just not yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I wait on God. You yeah. know, that's what I should have done in first. The first place. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it had to happen. You know, I don't regret it though. I don't. Re I regret that guy being with mm -hmm. him. But you know, because I got the disease, I'm not like mad anymore, and I'm not sad. I'm just happy to help people and share my story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you have done some great work with people carrying out your plays, acting in your plays. Robin Givens and, and, and people like that. I mean, that's awesome. And winning all those Thank you. different awards and the contest. That's awesome. Thank God you. is really working through you. Uh huh. Thank you. Is, yeah. And I thank him. Yeah. I yeah. thank him every day. Yeah. 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 And that's Give important. Yeah. That's important. You have a gift and you, and I mean, the two weeks you're still living. <laughs> how long has that, how long has that two weeks been going on now? <laughs> for a very long time <laughs> and i have not gotten sick or anything for a very long time <laughs> yeah your two, your two weeks it doesn't seem to have a date <laughs> <laughs> it's not a deadline no <laughs> no no your two weeks yeah. don't seem to have a date at all because it's, it's going and you're looking beautiful as ever i'm telling you you're looking beautiful <laughs> Thank yeah you. yeah and and you said you you lost memory and you know what I believe, too, and I believe that when you lose memory, I think it's good. Some people, some people think that, oh, my God, I can't remember this. I can't. It wasn't meant for you to remember, probably, in the first place. <laughs> right, right. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, because we, our mind, you know, is filled with so many information already, so many things to, to punish us, to repeat, you know, that constant mm -hmm. record playing to punish you, to make you feel guilty, shame, mm -hmm. disgusted mm -hmm. with yourself. Sometimes it's best to forget the damn thing. If they, if, if you could yeah. erase if you could erase all those things and don't remember it at all, we would live a better life. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Because the mind plays on you, and you talking about dementia, people go through PTSD and all sorts of things, you know, because the mind just keeps coming back at you with all these memories, blaming yourself. I mean, you could go through that. And blame yourself over yeah. and over and over yes. and over and over and punish yeah. yourself over and over and over. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. It's not going to change the situation. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Gonna, yeah, it's not going to change. You just need to accept. You, you learn the lesson. You teach people about it. Mm -hmm. And you move on as best as possible. And, and forgive yourself. The most important thing. Yes. Amen. For That's what God, God told me that. Mm -hmm. he, said I, he said, I was forgiving everyone else, even the guy who gave me the disease. He said, I don't forgive everyone else except yeah. for myself. And he told yeah. me I have to yeah. forgive myself. Yeah. Yeah. You need to forgive yourself first and foremost. You know, you made a mistake. You fell for it. Yeah, but so what? You know, you're not going to be the first. You're not going to be the last. Well, hopefully you'll be the last, but you won't. These <laughs> yeah. things happen. And, and we have to forgive ourselves. 
And that, that record that keeps playing over and over and over really doesn't help us to forgive ourselves. We need to really talk out. You know, when long ago you used to talk to yourself loudly, people say, oh, you're going crazy. No, you need to talk out loud. To right. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> Me too. Me uh, too. I talk to myself and answer back too. I talk yeah. to myself. <laughs> Yeah, I have that conversation with myself. Yeah. You know, and, and tell that voice that keeps playing in my mind to shut up and you're not going to do me this and stop stop trying to guilt me and shame me. It's ridiculous. You need to stop. It is not serving a purpose. You need to stop. You know? So, That's right. Yeah, because, because we are our, our own worst enemies. It makes no yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it makes no sense. And you've been through so much sexual abuse, your father committing suicide. Oh my God. All of that was happening during the time that you were celebrate and, and, and got together with this guy. Oh, uh, well, the guy I got uh, with him, like in 2000, it was early, to, like 2002. My father committed suicide in 1974. Oh, wow. But, yeah, but that hurt and pain, you know, he was my dad. So he was yeah. my best friend. I was his only daughter. He, oh, he wow. his child. Yeah, out of four. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, you, you have learned so much. What would you say? What, what are your daughters saying to you after they have seen you gone through all of this? What are they, they are, saying? Yeah. Yeah, they are, they telling me all the time. They proud of me, and uh, they call me strong because they they know when they got old. I told them about the rapes, the sexual assault and mm -hmm. stuff, and I went through. Uh, when I, I my first husband, I got married to him very young. I was sixteen. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and he started beating me. Whoa. And, yes, and I, I end up. I, he was locking me in the house. It was crazy, and I end up leaving him. And uh, I waited till they got older. You know, and, and I told them about that. And that's why they say I'm strong. They say you strong because I left him. I left him, and I went to college and everything, and took care of my business and my kids. You know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's possible it, there is a silver lining to Anna. How did you do that? You had your kids, you left him and went to college. How is that possible to Anna? Tell me. <laughs> Just strength. I, I don't, you, re, you know, really, I don't know, but I knew that I needed to do something with my life. Uh -huh. I, I knew that. And when I went to college, the professor, uh, I wrote an article about teen pregnancy because I was a teen mom, mm -hmm. and I wrote an article about it, and uh, he pulled me aside. He asked me, could he put it in a school, uh, school paper? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. The next day, he pulled me aside and said, uh, whispered to me and said, one day you're going to be a great writer. And I never, ever thought that I was going to do that. When he said wow. that, I never thought that I was going to do that, but I started doing it, you know, when I was wow. like... In, you know, like I started writing uh, poems mm -hmm. when I was uh, like 21. Mm -hmm. It was my outlet, like all the hurt and pain. So I would just write poems. Yeah. You know, so I've been writing poems for a long time. People see a lot. People see things in us that we don't see ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we must be open to it. Yeah. We must be yeah. open to it and to learn. Some things is for our growth that we need to work on. You yeah. know, all things we need to work on, whether it's something that, let's call it a weakness for want of a better word, but things that we need to work on to make us a better person, mm -hmm. as well as things that people see that are our potential, you know, that we can build on. And we need to really be keenly listening to what people see. And, you know, when people come to me and tell me the things that they see, I, I question them. I say, I'm interested in learning more. Tell me what it is. I'm curious that you're seeing in me. You know, I always stop them when they start to, to go in that direction. And sometimes they're taken aback with that because normally people don't further the question or, or delve a bit deeper. But I always want to know because, you know, we don't look at ourselves in that way. We just go along, you know, mosey along, go away every day. Uh -huh. But there are people who are looking at us and they're seeing something totally different because they mm -hmm. have a different pair of eyes. They're coming from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, they just, they look at you. You know, and um, it's good to listen and, and delve a bit deeper as to what it is that they're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. What it is that they're seeing. Mm -hmm. They may be seeing an aura around you that probably is not good or the people that may be around you as well. And you need to remove yourself from situations, from people, from circumstances. Mm -hmm. You just never know. So it's good to be open and listen. 
one, I want to hop across to the Amazon um, website because you said you didn't have, you're working on your own website right now. Mm -hmm. And I know, yes. the, I know the next time we speak, you know, you will have that up and running. But in the meantime, what I want to do is head over to the uh, Amazon page. Let me see if I can share that here and showcase your work. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so this is the this is the one that really talks about, I mean, your best work yet, as you says, my life from tragedy to destiny. This really details your life. Are you seeing that? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. this book really details your life. And you have some other books that I just wanted to showcase because there may be people who may be interested in getting copies of your other books. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Journal of Domestic Violence, which I think is a very popular topic. You did that in 2015. Mm -hmm. Liberty of Silence. This is the second edition. A lot of people are silenced from different things. Hmm. The Castle King Hill Gang, I mentioned that in your introduction. Mm -hmm. What is the Castle Hinga Hill Gang about? Can you give us a quick... Uh, yes, it's a children's book. Uh and it uh, talks about that one is don't burst my bubble so it talks about space okay. like have to stay out of people's space mm -hmm. but i have another one that's called uh, billy the bully so it's just going to be about different it's going to be serious once i really start doing it yeah and at the end of it has interaction for the kids to yeah. do like scramble words different things for them to do yeah i like this i like the cover as well from darkness to his marvelous light i like that Thank you. And you had some promotional items that I think you were doing when you were promoting your book. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So persons can, can come to your page and how I found it. I just put in your name in the search. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. I just put in your name in the search on Amazon, you know, but as I mentioned to you off air, it would be great to have an Amazon author page, okay. Amazon okay. central page where all your work, is featured in one place. <clears throat> it can it can also form as a as a sort of interim website for you, um, okay. where you can do blogs, you can add videos, you can add a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amazon Order Central. So if, as I mentioned, if you need help to get that going, you can just let me know and we can talk. Okay. You know, off air, so that it looks professional. You have somewhere. People can come and, and automatically yes. they can buy the book from your order page. You get paid, they get their book thing. So you don't have to worry about setting up a website yeah. immediately. If it's not a rush, everything is there. You can put, as I said, your blogs, your videos. You can connect with people who buy your books. It's, it's a one yeah. place that does everything for you. You okay. can do promotions. It, it serves like, like an, an, an author's website. It, it, it's like that. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you should have one of those. So connect with me if you're interested, okay? Okay, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I am a publisher, so I help persons to publish their books and, you know, get them organized. I really don't like to see when authors have books all scattered all over. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. All the different versions. So, for example, it says um, C formats. Well, you just have the Kindle, but normally I encourage my, my clients to go both Kindle and print format. Mm -hmm. So they will have both formats or even audio, all formats will be here, you know, and okay. everything will be featured in one place. Okay. Yes, this is lovely. The person who, who is on the cover, is this a real person? Uh, yes, I don't know the, the guy who was my publisher. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he got the uh, book cover from. He gave me a choice of book covers, and I chose that one because I thought it was a beautiful picture. Nice, nice. Yeah. And the second is falling off. <laughs> 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 That's nice, cute. So this is this is where it's at, people. So I want persons, you know, to be encouraged to pick up a copy of this. It may, it may do something for you. And I want to just read this review here that somebody wrote in 2015. She said, it's a light that shines, Twan alone is a light that shines bright to help those who find themselves in unimaginable life challenges. 
She was honored to read this book and have Twana on her radio and video show to tell her incredible story as she's doing here on Between the Lines. It's a must read and roadmap for faith. She has made the world a better place because of her strength and will to persevere. And I think I um, <clears throat> read somewhere else, I can't remember where I read it, that somebody bought three copies of your book. Somewhere I read that. Mm -hmm. They bought three copies of your book, one for themselves and two for <clears throat> family members. So it's awesome. I like the butterfly here. I just noticed that. It looks like an earring, but it's, it's really... I love butterflies. I yes. love butterflies. Me yes. too. I love butterflies. And they're so transformative and it, yeah. it, speaks, it speaks to, you know, you start off, I don't want to use the word ugly, but that's, you know, you start off not being a little worm yeah. crawling yeah. on the ground crawling on the ground, a caterpillar walking about, and you just, in a cocoon, in that little space and time, you transform into something yeah. so beautiful. It's like life, yeah. It is, it is, that is life. Yeah. It's like and, life. And, yeah. and sometimes, you, not sometimes, you need to take the time to step away, because you can't be disturbed. The butterfly, when he's in that cocoon, can't have anybody knocking on his door, you know, <laughs> and then, hey, I came to watch TV, no. <laughs> no no or to drink or to have fun you're in that cocoon right. spending time in peace in meditation mm -hmm. in in trying to decide because each butterfly comes out different it's not the same colors yeah. it's not the uh -huh. same no mm -hmm. no and some of them are not all butterflies some of them are moths some of them are yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right so you may not always turn out to be a butterfly it all depends on i think your mindset Mm -hmm. your purpose so you need to have and i'm saying this and i'm hearing spirit talking to me you know god talking to me and saying you know that is so significant it's, a, it's an important message to get across take the time and be in your cocoon mm -hmm. be in your cocoon stay away from everybody everything just mm -hmm. take the time yeah so perfect this yourself. time now yeah. yeah perfect yourself and yeah. know who you want to be so that when you come out you are proud of of what you become right right that is a serious message and i thank god for using me as a channel to to send that message out to everyone today and and for bringing Twana on my show to make that possible and for helping me to see this because i looked at the cover and all of a sudden my eye caught on this thank you mm -hmm. i appreciate it oh my goodness Twana, this has been awesome i really appreciate you yeah. i appreciate your story i appreciate your strength i appreciate your two weeks that has no date <laughs> <laughs> that's a good title <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> two weeks without a date and i really want to extend appreciation and thanks for the love of your children who stay yes. with you through it all and still with you your daughters your three daughters mm -hmm. hang tight it's the girl code it's the girl gang keep it together keep it together mm -hmm. to thank you thank you so much for being on between the lines okay thank you